Good evening, good evening, and welcome to the North Peoria Bible Class Hour. This is indeed the day that the Lord hath made, and we will rejoice, and we'll be glad in it. God is an awesome God. He's good all the time, and all the time, God is good. We're going to be waiting now for a few moments while those who usually tune in to the Bible Class Hour uh, come in. Uh, and if you will, when you come in, uh, tag somebody, uh, text somebody. Uh, tell them that the North Peoria Bible Class Hour is on, and there is a word from the Lord on tonight. <clears throat> In the middle of the week, we're going to take time for just a moment and study from the Word of God. This is a true delight, a true delight to be able to take time in this busy world, uh, to take time out for just a moment to look into the Word of God on this day. We need it to get through. We need it to get by uh, in this world in which we're presently living. I don't know about you, but there's power in the Word of God for me. It is that process by which I get through my day. Uh, all of the difficult things that happen, all of the great things that happen. For this Bible is just not about those da days when things are tough. Uh, this Bible is also about those days when you celebrate the beauty of the day and what God has done for you. And I'm sure tonight on this feed, God has done something wonderful in the life of somebody who's on this feed and online tonight. Uh, oftentimes when you hear preachers, they talk about how to get through the bad times. But there ought to be some celebratory times in your life. There ought to be some times when God is doing and has done something marvelous for you today. Uh, and if he's done something marvelous for you today, uh, you ought to be glad and grateful just to be able to look into his word for just a moment to tell him thank you on tonight. Uh, there are so many times at night when I pray, uh, I try not to ask God for anything. I just thank him for everything. Have you ever tried praying a prayer just a thank you, a thank yous all the way through the prayer itself? How refreshing it is when you can look back over the day and look back over your life and see how the Lord has continued to bless you and do those things for you that you cannot even do for yourself. So tell somebody that the North Peoria Bible Class Hour is on. We're going to be looking into the Word of God. We're going to look particularly at at John chapter 10, verse number 10, actually 1 through 10, but we're going to particularize verse number 10 on tonight. Tell them that the Bible classes hour is on. Share this with somebody. Press the share button so somebody will be able to hear the word of God. Before we get to John 10 tonight, there are a few things we need to share with those who are members of the North Peoria family and the virtual members as well. Uh, we are mindful tonight uh, that God is an awesome, awesome God. Uh, as we begin tonight, I want to extend our prayers uh, to the Florence Fox family. Sister Florence Fox, who was one of our members for the last 25 years of my stay here with this church, faithful member when she was able to come and to be involved in the services, passed away. Uh, and Sister Fox's funeral service will be uh, this coming Friday uh, at 2 o'clock at Keith Bigelow uh, Funeral Home there in uh, North Tulsa. So again, uh, Sister Florence Fox passed. Her funeral service will be this coming uh, Friday at two o'clock at Keith Bigelow's uh, funeral home there in North Tulsa. We extend our sympathies to Brother uh, Troy Pettit, her brother, to Sister Kim, who is her daughter, and Sister Terry, uh, Brother Terry, who is uh, her brother as well. So Terry and, and uh, Troy, we are certainly praying for you and the daughter. Uh, Kim, we want you to know we're lifting you up. There are other family members as well. Uh, we're lifting all of you up to God in prayer uh, that God will be with you and will be caring for you through this difficult process. Uh, keep them lifted to God in your prayers. Once again, the service will be this coming Friday at 2 o'clock for Sister Florence Fox, one of our faithful members when she was able to be uh, in services. So keep them lifted. Uh, also, uh, keep in mind that we're going to be re-entering the building in just another Sunday or so. On the first Sunday in June, we're going back uh, into the building. It's been March of 20 before uh, the last time we were in services together, March of 20. Uh, it's been over a year, uh, over a year that we have been out uh, of the building. We have been in services there with the nine or ten of us uh, the entire year, but you have not been in worship services in over a year. So on June 6th, uh, we're going back in celebratory, hallelujah moment, hallelujah time on that Sunday morning. Over 100 of us are 
a hundred of us will be uh, in service. And so those of you who pre-registered and who have had your vaccines and you've been vaccinated, you put your name on the list, that list is now on our website. And so you can go and find your name on the website, the first 100 uh, that will be uh, in services with us. There are extra names on that list and in 14 days, we'll be adding the others on that list. You'll be able to come in who've been vaccinated. If you don't get in on the first Sunday, uh, then in 14 days, we will certainly be getting you into uh, the services as well. But the first 100, the list is publicized. Uh, you can certainly go to the website and get that. Uh, there will be folks who are going to be calling you to let you know that you're in that first 100. Uh, and so again, if you're unable to make it on that day, uh, then let us know and we can get someone else uh, to come in your place or in your stead and you can come at some other time. But again, the first Sunday in June, we're going to go back in the building and we're going to be talking to God through prayer and song and listening to the preaching of his word, fellowshipping one with another. Social distance will apply, masks will be worn, uh, and sanitizing stations are there. But we're going to go back and praise God Almighty on the first Sunday in June. So again, we look forward to having that 100 in worship on that Sunday morning, re-entering on that day. We do wish for all of you who shall be traveling uh, on this weekend, uh, this holiday weekend, the first long weekend of uh, the summer, we do pray for you traveling grace. For those of you who have been vaccinated and who otherwise who are, have not but still traveling, we shall pray for you and for safety uh, for you and your family as perhaps you uh, take the long holiday after being in for a while on this weekend. We do ask that you be careful and certainly celebrate uh, the holiday in terms of Memorial Day weekend. Uh, those are others of you uh, who are going to be remaining, uh, then you uh, understand that we will still be doing the same thing on this Sunday, uh, and that is we will uh, take uh, your offering, and you can leave your offering, take the communion, and we'll, we'll be the last Sunday uh, that we will not have folk in worship services with us. So again, you can come by, pick up uh, your, your, your communion, leave your offering uh, on this coming Saturday between 12 and 3, and also on Sunday morning between 9 and 10. We extend our prayers tonight for uh, Brother Johnny Dimbury. Brother Johnny Dimbury is the father of, of Darla Matthews and Delilah Dimbury and uh, Darnella Dean. Uh, some confusion as to whose father he was. We want to correct that on tonight. He is Darla, Delilah, and uh, Darnella's father. And so again, we are prayerful for uh, Brother Johnny Dimbury that God will be with him in this time of illness. Let's take a moment now and go to God in prayer. Lord, thank you. You are mighty and awesome God. Thank you for caring for us this week and caring for us all of our lives. You've been so careful again as to allow us to see this beautiful day in which we are a part of. Nothing that we've done that make us worthy. you just good like that. Thank you for being good like that. Thank you for caring about us and blessing us over and over and over again. Thank you for the good attention that you've given our families to keep them safe throughout this pandemic and throughout all the difficult moments in our lives. We ask you now to be with everyone under the sound of my voice on this feed tonight, those who are listening. Those who are listening, some of us need you for one thing, some of us need you for another, but Father, know that we all need you. We can't make it without you. Be with us tonight, tonight as we look into the Word of God. Help us to increase the understanding of somebody who needs to understand more about you and about your Word. May they listen with attentive ears to hear what thus saith the Lord God Almighty. Father, be with us, guide us, and keep us. Bless all of those we've asked for, prayer for. Bless the Fox family. Continue to lift them. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's take a moment now and look into the Word of God. If you have a Bible near you, you can take it out. And let's turn to John's Gospel, chapter uh, 10. Uh, and I will not read all of the 10 verses that I want to look at, but I want to start at verse number 7 in order to particularize verse number 10 where we will find our lesson on tonight. Uh, and the Bible says in verse number seven of John 10, then Jesus said to them again, the door, uh, I am the door of the sheep. Uh, verse eight, and all who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. Verse nine, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. 
Verse 10, the verse we're looking at tonight, he says, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. But he says, I am come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Let's read that text again. What a wonderful text tonight. That's one of the ones that I love to read and to hear and meditate on in our own life. Jesus says, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill, my Lord, and to destroy. But I am come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Uh, from that text, I want to look at the subject tonight. Are you full yet? Are you full yet? Uh, some of us enjoy uh, dining. We enjoy eating. We can't wait until the restaurants are fully open and we're able to go back uh, uh, to the restaurant and sit down to our favorite meal at our favorite restaurant. Uh, and we will then begin to dine again as we did in years gone by. Uh, one of my favorite restaurants is uh, the restaurant where they serve these beautiful rolls and they are so warm and and you put butter in them. Uh, Texas Roadhouse and and uh, I will eat a roll before I eat the dinner. Uh, and I will eat another roll uh, and tempt it to eat another roll. Uh, and I may consume those with butter just dripping and running. And someone will say, uh, look like daddy, you got full early. Uh, yes, uh, I'm full. And there's something wonderful about being hungry and then able to feel yourself, to be full from something you enjoy consuming. Uh, have you ever been hungry and yet had that wonderful meal that you anticipated was going to be good and you delved into it and you found satisfaction from feeling yourself uh, with that meal that you were able to eat and to consume? Well, the word here, interestingly, in the Bible in John 10, he said, I came and I came that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Uh, the word is interesting that he uses here in this text. It is in the Greek text, uh, the word parisos. And the word parisos, when he uses the word abundantly, he uses this word and he simply means that I am come that you might have a full life. I want your life to be full, all of your life to be filled and for you to be full. Uh, God came in the person of Jesus, died on Calvary, that you and I in this world, even as it stands today, that we might be full and that we might have a life that's full. Anybody in this feed can say, as I look back across my life, I see some uneven journeys. I see some times when life was tough. I see times when I was sad. I saw times when I didn't have a whole lot of money. But even in those moments, my life was full. You see, I remember being in the country growing up at my grandmother's house. And we didn't have much money. We didn't have any money sometimes. We had very little. Anybody realize that you can have very little and still have joy? Uh, I remember uh, we didn't have all of the luxuries and the things that were fine things that other folk had. But the one thing we did have was joy and love. I remember sitting on the porch in the evening and catching candle, uh, those, those flies that would light up at night, the flies that would have the light on the end. We catch a jar full of those, uh, those lightning bugs and put them in a jar and let it light up tonight. What fun that was for children who didn't have all of the computers and didn't have the cell phones. We learn that life does not uh, become happy because we got stuff. There are some folk who can't be happy and have an abundant life because they don't have stuff. They think stuff makes life. I come by to tell you that you can have all the stuff in the world and still not have an abundant life. There are folk who got money, but they don't have joy. You see, we equate money with joy. I'll stop by to tell you, I equate Jesus with joy. I may not have much, but if I have Jesus, I got everything. Is there somebody who's a witness tonight? Oh, we were in that country 
with very little uh, in the old shotgun houses, cold, so much coldness in the house. You had to put so much cover, you couldn't hardly turn over. The fireplace that was not used for aesthetics, it was used to keep you warm and you'd be warm in the front and freeze behind. Somebody remember the houses where the dipper would freeze in the bucket. I'm talking to somebody's spirit tonight. You remember that it was not the best house, but when you got up and smelt uh, that old bacon uh, cooking in the skillet that was wood, you had joy. And I stopped by to tell you what's wrong with the world today is that we're still equating joy and happiness with money. And you may not have any money tonight, but I recommend to you Jesus because he can bring you joy. Joy, my friends, is found, the abundant life is found, number one, by doing something for somebody else. You want to have an abundant life? Stop focusing on yourself and do something for somebody else. Verse 8 and 10 of John chapter 10 tell us that we need to serve somebody other than ourselves. We need to be involved in the life of somebody other than us. Like you serve others. When you serve others, joy comes as a result of that. Let me tell you something. This past weekend, uh, our church family and the Virgin Street Church family went out into the community on Saturday uh, and they served over 200 homeless people. Well, mind you now, I said homeless. I don't mean folk who got a house like you in tonight with a computer like you got tonight, listening to the lesson like you listening to tonight. These are folk when it's raining outdoors, they're under the bridge on cardboard. These are folks who are sleeping on corners and these are folks who don't have a heater when it's cold and a air conditioner or when it's hot. These are folk who are just living their lives every day on what folk can give to them or what they can find. We did that on this past Saturday. Uh, fixed the boxes, fixed the mills and the sandwiches. Folk drove down from Kansas uh, just to be involved in serving somebody else. You see, when you learn to serve somebody else, it'll make you drive three hours without anybody buying your gas. It'll make you come uh, three hours without anybody being able to feed you. Uh, it'll make you drive three hours with gas being two seventy-five, three dollars a gallon, and you'll work for five or six hours during the day. Turn around and drive uh, three more hours back home, six hours worth of driving. Why would you do that? Because I want to serve somebody else. I want to tell you that for every face they saw that smiled when they handed them a sandwich, for every face they saw that had joy in it because somebody gave them a bottle of water. Don't you know that that's how you live the abundant life? Because it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. Is there somebody who can say amen? It's more blessed to give than to receive. If I'm giving, it means God has blessed me. It means God has given to me. God has lifted me. God has cared for me. God has been attended to me. He's taking care of my needs. And I'm in position tonight to give somebody something that they do not have. Oh yes, in terms of if you want to live an abundant life, learn how to give to somebody other than yourself. You see, we are folks who believe that if we got it, we can be happy. Let me tell you something. There is a story that I read just uh, today as I prepared for this lesson. In Cuba some years ago, teachers were turning folk away from God by using materialism, by making kids believe that if you got material stuff uh, that God didn't give you, you don't have to believe in him. So what they did in Cuba years ago is that across the school systems, Teachers would say this. They would say, how many of you kids want candy? And then their hands would go up. These are four and five year olders and, and three and four year olders. How many of you want candy in kindergarten and, and, and first grade? They would raise their little hands and say, I want candy. All right. Then they would tell them, y'all have heard of God, of what they talk about a God. So if you've heard of that God, won't y'all pray to him to give y'all some candy? And the little kids would bow their little heads and start praying uh, to God to give them candy. And after about 10 minutes of that, uh, the teacher would stop them. This is literally the truth in Cuba and said, I see you all still don't have no candy. You've been asking God for it and God didn't answer you. You see, any time there was a God that loved you, he would have given you the candy 
that you asked him for, but he didn't give you any. So now I want you to, to, to ask the government uh, for candy. Ask the government to provide for you. And so they would then ask the government for candy. The little kids would say, will the government give us some candy? Then the teachers would go by the desk of every child and put candy in the hand of that child and say, your God couldn't do it, but the government did it. You see, that God that y'all heard about that gives you all of this stuff, that provides all of your needs, ain't real. But the government gave you what your God can't. But I stopped by long enough to tell you that my God supplies all of my needs. He will supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. I've learned that you need more than candy to survive. You need more than just a simple act by a teacher to try to turn you away from God to survive. All you got to do is grow up a little more, children. Grow up a little more and have a bad day. Grow up a little more and lose a loved one. Grow up a little more and have a sick day. Grow up a little more and get laid off from your job. Grow up a little more. Then you'll see that the God that you said that wouldn't give you candy will lift you. He'll bless you. He'll feed you. He'll keep you. Somebody in the field know what I'm talking about. Ain't he real in your hearts on tonight? God is a wonderful God. So if you want to live an abundant life, uh, then learn to do something for somebody else other than yourself. And then real quickly, as I close tonight, I'm going to give you these points and won't get to all of them, but just share them with you. An abundant life is not an empty life because if you're full, you're not empty. Uh, many folk today are living empty lives because the Lord is not there. Pasteur, a philosopher once said, there is a vacuum in the heart of every person that can only be filled with the person of Jesus Christ. You see, if you're empty, that means that you don't have the Lord in your life because the Lord will see to it that your life is not empty, but your life is full. Uh, you don't have to have people around you to have a full life. You don't have to have the world's goods to have a full life. You don't have to have a new car to have a full life. You don't even have to have a new house or new clothes to have a full life. All you really need is Jesus. Paul said, Christ in me, the hope of glory. As long as I have the Lord in me, then joy will abide. Peace will abide. Uh, I have all that I need if I know the Lord. Sometimes folk are not available when you need them. You can call them and they will answer the phone. You can ask them for a favor and they don't have anything to give you. But the Lord has always, hear me now, the Lord has always been there for me. Not one time have I called him and he didn't answer. He may not have given me the answer that I wanted, but he always answered my prayer. Uh, won't God do it for you? And that's my theme uh, this whole year is won't he do it? Has he done it for you? You'll hear me repeat that theme over and over again. I told somebody the other day when they were waiting on a doctor's report, when they were waiting on uh, the doctor to say whether it was something serious or not. And I prayed with them and I said, look here, I serve a God that's more than able. And then when they called back and said, he delivered me and it wasn't what they thought it was. It wasn't cancer. It is something that's very simple. And my phrase to her was, won't he do it? Now, somebody in this feed tonight ought to say with me, won't he do it? Uh, has he already done it for you? So if you're going to live an abundant life or the full life and be full, then you need to know that God came that you wouldn't be empty. Number two, a life that is abundant is a life that isn't filled with dreadfulness. Uh, 2 Timothy 1, 7, God has not given us the spirit of fear. You see, I'm not dreading tomorrow. I'm not dreading tonight. I'm not dreading uh, next week because I know who holds my future. I know God got me in the palm of his hand. I know anything I need, God got it. And whatever I need him to do for me, for my existence, God will sustain me. His hand will guide me. His arms will lift me. His spirit will keep me. I know I'm led and kept by the best. Uh, there's not one time that he's let me down. He's never turned his back. He's never said no to those things essential for my life. And so I trust God tonight. And so I'm not dreading life. I don't have a spirit of fear. Uh, I'm not worried about men or what men may do or say. I trust my Lord. And so if you have a full life, 
you're not dreading uh, life itself. Number uh, three, if you're living an abundant life, you're not living an anxious life. I'm not anxious about what's going to happen. Matthew 6 and verse 33, another part of this abundance, talk about worrying. And worrying is just like a rocking chair. It'll give you something to do, but it won't get you nowhere. You'll be right at the same spot you were yesterday and the day after. You see, a lot of us spend a lot of time worrying about that which never happens. I'm not going to spend the rest of my life or the rest of my day worried about that which I cannot control. I always tell the North Pier members, do not worry about what you cannot control. You do what you can about what you can control and trust God to do that which you cannot. I am not going to spend time being anxious about how am I going to eat because the Bible says he cares about the birds uh, of the air. He feeds them. He keeps the birds of the air. And it says, are you not much greater than the birds? So I'm not going to be anxious about how I'm going to eat or what I'm going to eat. I just know I'm going to eat. If I have to come to your house to eat, then I believe you'll feed me because of the generosity of God in your life. So stop worrying about what uh, is going to happen and thank God for what is happening. I can't, I can't control the wind. If it blows or not, if it blows, then I'm all right. If it doesn't blow, it's all right. I can't control the weather. If it's hot, I'm good. If it's cold, I'm good. Because I know the Lord going to keep me through everything that goes on in life. So I'm not going to be anxious about nothing. Because God got me. He got my back. And then number four, life is not about being guilty and feeling guilty about uh, yesterday. All of us have some yesterday moments that can make us feel guilty about things we've said, things we've done, places we've gone. I believe somebody who's old enough has done something that they don't have any business doing. Somebody in this feed old enough, you said something you had no business saying. Somebody old enough in this feed to have gone some places you had no business going. But I stop by to tell you, God offers forgiveness for your yesterday. Are you glad about that? Are you glad that God can clean you up? Are you glad that God can fix it up? Aren't you glad God can doctor it up and wipe it out like it never happened? Oh yeah, my yesterday is gone. So why worry about yesterday? It's already gone. Why worry about tomorrow? It ain't here yet. All I'm thankful for tonight is my right now. And so somebody ought to say, God, I'm thankful for my right now. Yes, I have sinned and come short. Everybody in this feed ought to be able to say, I've done some things. I've sinned and come short of the glory of God. But thank God he cleaned me up. He gave me some more time to get it right. God is giving you time right now to get it right again. God is giving you time right now to clean up your speech and to clean up your act and to act like a child of God. God is giving you one more day and one more minute to make sure your mind is straight, that your mouth is straight, that your life is straight, and you ought to straighten it up and get ready to meet the Lord someday. I'm glad tonight that I don't feel guilty, though I am guilty. Blakeney, why don't you feel guilty? Because I'm clean by his blood. I'm filled with his spirit. I'm anointed by the power of the Lord himself. And so when the Lord has cleaned you, you're clean. When the Lord has forgiven you, you're forgiven. It doesn't matter whether men forgive you, whether men are say, I'm sorry that I treated you that way. It doesn't matter about that. When God is in your life, you're all right. And so again, if you are guilty, God can remove the stain of guilt. God can make you clean and wash you and make you white as snow through his blood and through his word. And so I'm glad that night. And then number five, as I close, I'm glad if you live an abundant life, it's a separated life. Hebrews chapter four and verse number 16. When you live the abundant life, you are separate from the world. You separate yourself from those things of the world and in the world that draw you back to the world. You see, all that's in the world, lust of the flesh, pride of eye, uh, of life, and those things are the things that encumber us. Those things are the things that drag us through the mud, wanting what other folk got, uh, being around folk who don't love God, spending too much time in chaotic situations. You know, I've learned that I have to separate myself. I have to come out from among them, saith the Lord. Be ye separate, touch not, taste not, handle not the unclean things of this world, and I will receive you. Now, it doesn't mean that I'm better. It doesn't mean that I think I'm better than anybody else. 
I'm just as uh, guilty of some things as anybody else. It just means I try harder than they do. It means that I'm trying not to be uh, the same person tomorrow that I was today. I'm trying to be better tomorrow. I'm trying to better myself. And so uh, what I need to do is separate myself from some of the things and people that are in this world. Some folk right now are holding you back. They're holding you up. Uh, they're holding you away from the blessing of God. Some people right now in your life are blocking your blessing. They're always blessing blockers uh, in your life. You have to figure out who are the folk blocking your blessing. Is there somebody tonight blocking your blessing? Is there somebody tonight who's holding you back? Uh, is there somebody tonight who like those robbers? They're holding you up. Have you ever been held up by a robber? Jesus says, as I close, he says, all these other folk are robbers. Uh, have you ever been robbed? robbed of your joy, robbed of your pride, robbed of all of the great things in your life. Somebody will rob you. He said, robbers are destroyers. They come to destroy you. I want you to know that it's the devil's, his primary aim in life is to destroy you and to see you beaten down to the world, uh, in the world. But Christ came, the Lord came, wrapped himself up, died that you and I might have joy and that we might have it abundant above more than enough isn't it wonderful when you can say that i have more than enough i'm glad to be able to say tonight in my life as i close the lesson i have enough but in so many areas i have more than enough i have more than enough joy that i can loan you some i have more than enough grace i can share it with you god has an abundant supply of whatever it is that you need. And so tonight, I want you to understand as you move into this holiday, as we go back into our buildings, as we get ready to serve God uh, on a higher level, Jesus says, I came that in this world, you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. I want you to be full. I want you to be full. I want you to have a full. Are you full yet? If you're not full yet, Keep on serving God. Keep on praying. Keep on going to service. Keep on serving everybody else. Keep that right attitude. And sooner or later, you'll be full because God will fill you with his spirit. And when you're full of the Holy Spirit, then the devil can't do you no harm. Uh, oh, tonight, when you're full of God and your life is full of him, there's not room for anything else to get in. Trust and try God tonight and then live that abundant life. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you that many of us on this feed tonight have more than we need, enough that we're able to share with somebody else. Thank you for every needed blessing. Thank you for propping us up on every leaning side. Thank you for handing us life and giving it to us more abundantly. Thank you for being our Father, our friend and our Savior. Thank you for keeping us, watching over us, and providing everything that we need. Lord, we love you. We love you in good times, and we love you in bad. Our love for you is unyielding and unending. Thank you for being our Savior and being our God. Thank you for being a mighty good Savior and for keeping us all safe. Continue now to hold us. Continue now to keep us. When we're sad, lift our spirits. When our heads are down, lift our heads. When we cry, dry our eyes and wipe our tears away. And we'll continue to call your name blessed. Do it because we ask you to. In the name of our resurrected Savior Jesus, we ask these things. And every heart that agreed said, amen, amen, and amen. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. As always, if you believe this has been a good word for you, if it's blessed your life, reach down now and press the share button uh, and share this message with somebody else who may need just this word in the middle of the week. So do that for me right now. Press the share button. Uh, tell them and that the word of God has been preached uh, and that it will bless your life if you'll take a moment just to listen to God's word. I want to thank all of those of you who listen on Wednesday nights to our Bible class hour. Our numbers have been uh, going down somewhat as people have gotten back into their uh, lives and gotten back into their different uh, venues on Wednesday nights and not shut in anymore. But there's still those who listen every week. 
We appreciate you for tuning in and for sharing the Word of God with those that need the Word of God. So again, if you're not a person who ordinarily and usually share the Word of God, you don't ever press the share button. Do it tonight uh, that somebody may be able to hear a word from the Lord in the middle of the week. And we will appreciate you for doing that. We will again be in the building on this coming Sunday. This will be our last Sunday with just our slim crowd in the building. Uh, the Sunday in June, first Sunday, we're looking forward to having 100 people in the building at one time. Remember, uh, those of you who are listening, who are coming, make sure you have your face mask. We're going to do socially uh, distant behavior, ex exercise that behavior. We're going to have sanitizing stations. There'll be folks who will be seating you, and we're looking forward to having a great time. Bring your immunization card with you so we'll indicate that you have had your vaccine. And let's get ready. Uh, and the wrestling match says, so let's get ready to rumble. But let's get ready to have a hallelujah moment on the first Sunday uh, in June. Remember, your name is on the website if you get a chance to come in. If you got to be among that number that's coming in, your name is on the website. There'll be somebody calling you this week letting you know that you are among the number coming in uh, on the first Sunday in June. We've got special services planned just for you. Then in 14 days of you who are not on uh, the 101st, your name is set on the list and we'll be bringing you in in the next 14 days as we worship for two Sundays with just that group and then we'll bring somebody else in on the following group. So again, continue to pray for us that things will be safe and things will be well. Uh, continue to lift those up in prayer who need it. And God has a blessing just for you. Remember as I close the lesson tonight, he has a blessing just for you and you are next in line. Don't get out of line. You're next in line. Tune in again on Sunday uh, and be with us at 10 o'clock in the morning for the Bible class, for the morning worship services for the North Peoria Church. Press the share button. God bless you, hold you, and he keep you real good. Bless you real good until next week.